for Can I just kind of jump to this magazine? Because yeah. in time, here it says, Red Heifer and the Third Temple. What, what is this about? Yeah, so I'll give you a little background here. The, in Numbers 19, they had to have, the Lord said, hey, I want you to have a, to bring a red heifer because anybody who had, they were wanting to start implementing the sacrifices in the tabernacle. And so the Lord said, hey, I want you to have a red heifer for your purification sacrifice. Anybody who has been contacted in contact with death at all, if they're going to go up and administer the sacrifices, they, you have to have a red heifer for a purification sacrifice. You would uh, burn the red heifer, sacrifice it, take the ashes, mix it with water, put it around the camp, on their tents, administer it to the people, and they would be purified and be able to do the sacrifices. Well, the Jewish tradition says that, hey, now that we're fixing to build the third temple, we have to have a red heifer in order to get it ready for the sacrifices that will happen in the administration of the temple because somebody ha the Israel has to be purified because pretty much everybody in Israel has been in contact with death, whether you've walked by a graveyard, been in a hospital, or anything. So when Israel came back together as a nation, now, before I go into that, prior to that tradition, Jewish tradition says that they've had nine red heifers. They believe the tenth one will lead in the ushering in of the Messiah. So they've had nine. They haven't had one since 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed. Wow. So now when Israel came back together as a nation after World War II in 1948, they've been trying to get a red heifer. Throughout the years, there was a guy um, that, well, so miraculously, there was a red heifer born in northern Israel named Melody years ago. This would be back in the 90s. And they thought, well, hey, God supplied the red heifer. The problem is it has to be a true red heifer. It cannot have any white or black hairs on its body at all. And I mean, they inspect every hair when they inspect them. Well, Melody uh, developed some white hairs on her tail, and they said she disqualified. So it didn't come to fruition. Then later on, there was a guy named Clyde Lott in Mississippi years ago. They were trying to work with the Temple Institute to crossbreed um, cattle to try to get a true red heifer. It never came to fruition. They couldn't come up with one. A few, so Israel, the Temple Institute said, hey, we'll take the matter into our own hands. They were working with a rancher in Israel to crossbreed cattle to try to get a true red heifer. In 2018, they thought they had two. And they were constantly checking. They go out just on a weekly basis and check to see. Well, one of them developed, uh, I think, black hairs on her person, and the other one developed a blemish because the calf cannot have, um, the heifer cannot have any kind of blemish on it at all. Well, the problem is the one developed a blemish and one developed some hairs that were of the wrong color. So what happens? Let's bring it to 2022. There was a friend of mine, his name is Byron Stinson, and he had done a few construction projects over in Israel, he was in, involved in a $3 million uh, restoration project of the Kid, in the Kidron Valley between the Temple, the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives, that big valley. He would, did a big clean, a restoration act down through there. Well, they knew he was from Texas. And they, they just offhanded, they said, hey, you're from Texas. You think you can find us a red heifer, the land of cattle? He was like, I'm in construction. I, what are you talking about? And uh, they said, try to find us a red heifer. So he thought, okay. So he came back to Texas started sending out emails and flyers and things like that, and had some ranchers contact him and said, I think we've got red, true red heifers. Well, in, um, the, the project started moving along. They started going out and checking for them. Well, in the meantime, just a few, maybe within the last year, a guy near, down near, um, I would say, southwest of Dallas contacted the Temple Institute and said, hey, I've got five true red heifers. I know you guys are looking for a red heifer. I've got five. They sent a rabbi from Dallas down there to check it out, and none of the five, they all had some hairs that weren't the right color and things like that. However, Byron Stinson's efforts, um, they, they, he had these ranchers contact him. He started going out and looking around, and he thought, man, these look really red. So he, they had a delegation from Israel come over, rabbis, check the red heifer, heifers, and listen at this, Jim. They've now found 21 qualified wow. rabbi approved red heifers oh, Whoa. Wow. absolutely and so you think we're not living in the end time we absolutely oh, wow. are you think the temple's going to be rebuilt soon yeah if the if one of these now imagine this the bible does prophesy the temple will be built uh in the end time 
for them to start administering the, the sacrifices in the temple, the daily administration, the priest, they will have to have one of these red heifers. So the Bible prophesies we're going to have a third temple, that it's going to be rebuilt. And the Bible prophesies that these sacrifices will be resumed because it says halfway through the final seven years, the Antichrist will cause the sacrifices to cease. Yeah. So if, they're, if you're going to see sacrifices, they have to have been instituted, right? So to do that, they'll have to have a red heifer. So what's the chances that one of these 21 red heifers that have been found and, and are getting ready to be shipped over to Israel, they've now been tested and approved with the Department of Agriculture. They've been uh, approved to be shipped. What's the chances that one of these 21, they only need one, can get up to two years and one month. It's got to be in the third year. Right now, they've just been born. Some of them are up to four or five months old because they had to get them before they had to be tagged in the ear. If you punch their ear with a the tag, then it's a blemish and they can't be used. Oh my so they land. caught these when they were just born. They've never been tagged. And I went, I went uh, three weeks ago and saw 14 of them in, you, a, in, you, in a ranch. With your own eyes. With my own, I've got pictures of them. And they are with, I saw uh, 14 of them at a ranch just south of Dallas, Texas. And I saw them putting a chip in its neck, two inches behind its left ear, the RFID tracking chips. And um, I'm telling you, if one of these red heifers could be the one, can you imagine what the religious sect of Israel would do to the government saying, hey, you need to compromise. We need to get a peace agreement signed with the Palestinians, place a temple mount under a sharing arrangement. We've got to build our third temple. This is an act of God. We've got to move straight yeah. forward.